Right now to the latest on the disasters in Indonesia and the South Pacific. In Indonesia this morning, a second major earthquake, a magnitude 6.8, struck 135 miles south of Padang, a city that was already devastated by Wednesday's 7.6 magnitude quake. Farther east, the search for tsunami victims goes on in the islands of Samoa, American Samoa and Tonga. We will bring you a live report from Samoa in just a moment. But first, we want to get you the latest on Indonesia from CBS News correspondent Kelly Wallace, who's been following this. Good morning. Good morning, Maggie. The extent of damage and destruction from this one-two punch won't be known for days, but authorities believe the death toll of more than 500 will climb substantially, with reports hundreds of buildings collapsed in the first quake and fears that many people are trapped beneath the rubble. Sumatra Island was slammed with not one but two earthquakes in 24 hours. The first quake struck off the coast of Padang at 5.16 p.m. Wednesday local time. The second inland quake hit less than 16 hours later Thursday morning local time. The latest quake, a shallow inland earthquake, is known to cause more destruction and building damage. Amateur video captured the fear when the first massive earthquake struck. Hundreds of people running for their lives in Padang, a coastal city with a population of 900,000. The shaking was so intense that people had to sit on the street to avoid falling. Rescuers used their bare hands to comb through debris. Hampering the rescue effort, a loss of power and communications in the hardest hit areas, and more than two dozen landslides which have blocked roads and caused miles-long traffic jams. The quakes happened along the same fault line as the one which triggered a tsunami in Indonesia in December 2004, killing more than 230,000 people, Maggie. All right, Kelly Wallace, thank you, Kelly, sure. for coming in. Now to the South Pacific, where a major relief effort is underway this morning to get food, water and medicine to areas devastated by Wednesday's earthquake and tsunamis. Reporter Michael Mora of New Zealand's TV3 sent in this report from one of Samoa's hardest hit areas. In the village of Saliapaga, Tuolina Sani was consoled by a police officer as the body of her mother was driven away. What makes it worse is that it was Sani herself who found the body buried beneath a sheet of corrugated iron. Half an hour later, Sani's two nieces, aged one and two years old, were also discovered. The tsunami's damage was most obvious in the village of Potasi. Along with a secondary school being destroyed, fishing vessels were flung onto the shore. Nine people in this village alone are feared dead. We ran back through the farms, through the, the pig farm at the back there and, and up the hill and we only just made it like by about 10 seconds. But lots of people didn't. Saw lots of people get sucked away. Overhead, a New Zealand Air Force Orion was searching for bodies and dropping smoke flares to mark them. While below, the Samoan Navy had the grim task of retrieving them from the ocean. That report from Michael Moore of New Zealand's TV3.